Now, so the system settings are specific to your computer, so there might be different things in here like where different VST plugins are and so on. But the other thing that I would set is I'd come to playback and I'd change this buffer size. The buffer defaults to only half a gig and I like it to be a bit higher. If I've got 16 gig, I'll put it about 2. If I've got 32 gig, I'll put it about 4. I mean, you can go all the way up and use a much larger buffer if you want. What the buffer does is it helps EDIUS play stuff back. So the more RAM you've got in the buffer, the more it can sort of build up effects and play them without having to render them. It's a bit like an After Effects RAM preview, if you like. The 512 meg is going to be the minimum that you'll want, and you'll always want to up it up that, assuming that you're not working on the simplest computer in the world. So I'm going to stick that at 4 gigabytes. There's a couple of other small things that are worth mentioning as we're looking at the system settings. First, under effects, if you go to color correction here, you can see this heading for primary color corrector. And the primary color corrector can actually use a graphics card to do a lot of its processing. It's not on as a default, but you can come in here and tick it. You notice my system here actually has two graphics cards. This is the better one, so I tick that one. This will soup up the primary color corrector and make it work a bit faster. The only time I wouldn't tick this is if you're using Windows 7. There's a problem with Windows 7, which is apparently a Microsoft problem, so it's never going to be fixed, that if you tick this on Windows 7 and use the primary color corrector a lot, it's likely to cause EDIUS to crash. Yeah, it's nice to have it ticked, but don't tick it if you're on Windows 7. Another thing worth mentioning is QuickTime. We had a lot of kerfuffle in 2017 about the US government saying QuickTime for Windows should be removed from PCs. And of course, lots of video programs relied on it heavily and they changed EDIUS to cope with it. Well, you can still use QuickTime to playback QuickTime files and sometimes it's nice to have that on there because there are some files that don't work unless QuickTime is going. Now you can tell whether it's working or not by coming down to Importer and opening up and looking for the QuickTime heading. If QuickTime isn't there it means you don't have QuickTime installed and you can see I can't see QuickTime here and that's because I haven't installed it. So maybe I should go off and install it. So I'm going to come out of this, close down EDIUS, Get hold of the QuickTime installer, and I'm using the final version, which is 7.79, which is the one I'd always use, and double click on it and install QuickTime into your computer. Now you've got to do this obviously with EDIUS off, so I'm just going to go next, yes, choose custom, and I'm going to make sure these things on here are not ticked. So all these optional QuickTime features, they're already not selected anyway, but make sure they stay not selected. And I'm also going to go to QuickTime Player and choose Entire Feature Will Be Unavailable to make sure that doesn't get installed. So all I'm installing is this thing at the top, QuickTime Essentials. This is the best way to install QuickTime if you're going to put it onto a Windows machine because it does really stop all those things that they were making such a fuss about last year. So I'll install that and I just untick these things because I don't want desktop shortcuts or I don't want it updating because there won't be any updates and I just let it go in. Now I'll come back into EDIUS and go back into the system settings and that importer and exporter and now you notice I've got QuickTime. If you click on that you've got this option here to enable the QuickTime importer so just by putting QuickTime on there it doesn't use it but if you then come down here and tick that now it uses QuickTime to open up certain kinds of files and I think it's worth doing because I've had some files that won't open up if this isn't there. Sometimes it affects MP4 files. You know, you can get MP4 files for all over the place. Well, some MP4 files that I've got won't work properly unless this is in and ticked. Sometimes it affects QuickTime files because although EDIUS natively supports a lot of QuickTime codecs these days, it doesn't support all of them. So if you shove that on there, it'll support more QuickTime files. I don't really have a problem with it if I installed it in the way I've just described. So I do that, tick it, as it says, restart EDIUS. But once you've restarted EDIUS, it'll just open up some files in a different way. And I find I prefer to have that on there and installed and ticked because some files work better. Of course, you might never ever have a problem with it. But if you have a problem with some QuickTime or MP4 files, do that. Just install QuickTime and tick that box. The other thing it will let you do is export QuickTime files. If you actually have no QuickTime installed, when you come down to here and you want to actually export stuff, the only options you'll have is QuickTime, Grass Valley, HQ and HQX. You won't have any of the other stuff. 
Whereas if you install QuickTime, then you can choose this and then pop in here and then choose all the sort of QuickTime codecs that we've been used to using for ages. Now again, I don't use those very often, but if I want to do something like export in an Avid codec, then I can do that if I install QuickTime and the QuickTime Avid codec. I can't do that if I don't. So I like to put QuickTime on there. My biggest thing has actually been that I have some MP4 files, like I do all these screen recordings using MP4 files, well, some of the ways I've been able to record MP4 files don't work properly in EDIUS without that QuickTime importer ticked. With EDIUS 9, you actually get access to New Blue Titler Pro 5. It's a special version of Titler Pro 5 just for EDIUS. Now, I've done a series of videos about installing New Blue Titler Pro in EDIUS. It doesn't go in automatically, so you've got to download it separately and install it. So if you want Titler Pro 5, and with that you'll also get the OFX bridge which lets you load OFX plugins. Check out my videos on installing Titler Pro 5 and how to get hold of it and install it. You know, it's free with EDIUS 9 and it's unlimited and it's for both people with the Pro version and the Workgroup version. So you know it's worth getting if all you've got is Quick Titler, but you don't get it in there automatically, you've got to go off and get it. If you've downloaded EDIUS, you may or may not have some DVD menu templates with it. What am I talking about? Well, you've got this whole option to burn to disc inside of EDIUS, which is great. You can make a DVD or a Blu-ray disc off of the timeline. And it works on a template system. So you go to the style heading here and you've got a bunch of templates down here, which you can choose which one you want and then customize it. As a default, EDIUS doesn't download and install those for you. The main installer that you'll download from Grass Valley just has a couple of very simple templates. It doesn't have all these others. So to get hold of those, all you've got to do is come up to the help menu and choose download DVD menu style and it'll pop onto the interweb and it'll say, oh, do you want to save this thing? Yep. And then with EDIUS not open, you run it and it puts all those menu templates in. It depends on where you ordered your EDIUS. Sometimes you get a package that comes down which has an installer for EDIUS and an installer for these DVD menus as well. So you might have already got it in the package that you downloaded. But if you haven't, that's the way to get hold of it. Just pop up to the help menu and choose download DVD menu style. When it comes to the user settings, there is a lot of stuff that I would fiddle with. So generally in the user settings, I would come in here and I'd open up this go to playback and tick all these boxes i go to application and then timeline and i'd make sure i have overwrite mode as the default and lots of other stuff in here but they are preferences you can use it as it comes out the box or you can change the settings now i do have a set of dvc user settings as well which you can load up to do that go to settings system application profile so the profile is your user settings I'm going to right click on the one that's already there and say import. And here you can see I've got some DVC settings. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to add in another user. So now I've got two different users. It's still using David, which is the one it started off with. To use the other settings, I've got to click OK, go up to settings, change profile, and then choose DVC. And you'll notice things move around a little bit. If I go to the view heading, and layouts, you'll notice I have a couple of layouts. So there's one, for example, which brings everything onto a single screen. The other one spread it out over two screens. And I happen to have two screens on this computer at the moment. You, you can only see one of them. You might have also noticed I added a whole bunch of different buttons here onto the timeline. I'm not going to explain what they all do here. I'm basically going to say, if you want to, you can take that DVC user profile, load it up into your computer, and then it'll have the settings I like to have. And maybe you want to start from there as opposed to the default settings for Grass Valley. But they are really just preferences. You'll probably change some. You'll probably add some buttons in, take some buttons away, maybe change some keyboard shortcuts. All that kind of stuff is in that user profile. And like I say, I have some certain preferences which I like, which is what you'll get if you load up that DVC user preset. But of course, you can always pop back to your own just by coming over here. And you can make up as many as you like. You can have different settings for different people if you've got loads of different people using the computer. But the most important things to do, set up some project presets, get your hardware set up, then you're ready to edit.